Very good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on this Monday, the 1st of August 2022. Evening prayer begins with our prayers of preparation. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory for ever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> and our hymn for this evening is Father, hear the prayer we offer. Father, hear the prayer we offer. Not for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously. Not for ever in green pastures do we ask our way to be, but the steep and rugged pathway may we tread rejoicingly. Not for ever by still waters would we idly rest and stay, but would smite the living fountains from the rocks along our way. Be our strength in hours of weakness, in our wanderings be our guide, through endeavour, failure, danger, Father, be thou at our side. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and for ever. Amen. And our first psalm for this evening is Psalm 4. Answer me when I call a God of my righteousness. You set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you nobles dishonour my glory? How long will you love vain things and seek after falsehood? But know that the Lord has shown me his marvellous kindness when I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart <clears throat> more than when their corn and wine and oil increase. In peace I will lie down and sleep. But it is you, Lord, only who make me dwell in safety. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And Psalm 7. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from those who pursue me and deliver me, lest they rend me like a lion and tear me in pieces, while there is none, no one to help me. O Lord my God, if I had done these things, if there is any wickedness in my hands, if I have repaid my friend with evil or plundered my enemy without a cause, then let my enemy pursue me and overtake me, trample my life to the ground and lay my honour in the dust. Rise up, O Lord, in your wrath, lift up yourself against the fury of my enemies, awaken my God, the judgment that you have commanded. Let the assembly of the peoples gather around you. Be seated high above them, O Lord, judge the nations. Give judgment for me according to my righteousness, O Lord, and according to the innocence that is in me. Let the malice of the wicked come to an end, but establish the righteous, for you test the mind and heart, O righteous God. God is my shield that is over me. He saves the true of heart. God is a righteous judge. He is provoked all day long. If they will not repent, God will wet his sword. He has bent his bow and made it ready. He has prepared the weapons of death and makes his arrows shafts of fire. Behold those who are in labour with wickedness, who conceive evil and give birth to lies. They dig a pit and make it deep and fall into the hole that they have made for, them, for others. 
Their mischief rebounds on their own head, their violence falls on their own skull. I will give thanks to the Lord for his righteousness. I will make music to the name of the Lord Most High. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And a reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 26. In the beginning of the reign of King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord. Speak to them all the words that I command you. Do not hold back a word. It may be that they will listen, all of them, and will turn from their evil way, that I may change my mind about the disaster that I intend to bring upon them because of their evil doers. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, if you do not listen to me to walk in my law that I have set before you and to heed the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send to you urgently, though you have not heeded, then I will make this house like Shiloh and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people took hold of him, saying, You shall die. You have prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant. And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. <clears throat> when the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat at the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death, because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and to all the people, saying, it is the Lord who sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now therefore amend your ways <coughs> and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will change his mind about the disaster he has pronounced against you. As for me, here I am in your hands. Do with me what seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will be bringing innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to speak to you all the words in, the, in your ears. Then the officials and all the people sent to the priests and the prophets, This man does not deserve the sentence of death, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. And some of the elders of the land arose and said to all the assembled people, Micah of Moresheth, who prophesied during the days of King Hezekiah of Judah and said to all the people of Judah, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Zion shall be ploughed as a field, Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins, and the mountain of the house a wooded height. Ding, did King Hezekiah of Judah and all Judah actually put him to death? Did he not fear the Lord and entreat the favour of the Lord? Did not the Lord change his mind about the disaster that he had pronounced against against them? But we are about to bring great disaster on ourselves. There was another man prophesying in the name of the Lord, Uriah, son of Shemaiah from kiriath Yearim. He prophesied against this city, against the land, in words exactly like those of Jeremiah. And when King Jehoiakim and all his warriors and all the officials heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. But when Uriah heard of it, he was afraid and fled and escaped to Egypt. Then King Jehoiakim sent Elnathan, son of Achbor, and men with him to Egypt. And they took Uriah from Egypt and brought him to King Jehoiakim, who struck him down with the sword and threw his dead body into the burial place of the common people. But the hand of Achikam, son of Shaphan, was with Jeremiah so that he was not given over into the hands of the people to be put to death. <clears throat> Here ends the first reading. And the song of God's grace. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
For you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us for adoption as your children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will, to the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In you we have redemption through the blood of Christ, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of your grace, which you have lavished upon us. You have made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of your will, according to your purpose which you set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time. To unite all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. Excuse me. <clears throat> Reading from St Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11. I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me. I feel a divine jealousy for you, for I promised you in marriage to one husband to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I'm afraid that the serpent deceived, as the serpent deceived Eve by its cunning, your thoughts will be led away from a sincere and pure devotion for Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you received a different gospel <clears throat> from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you submit to it readily enough. I think that I am not in the least inferior to these super-apostles. I may be untrained in speech, but not in knowledge, certainly in every way and in all things. You have made this, we have made this evident to you. <clears throat> Did I commit a sin by humbling myself so that you might be exalted, because I proclaimed God's news to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you, and when I was with you and when I was in need, I did not burden anyone, for my needs were supplied by the friends who came from Macedonia. So I refrained and will continue to refrain from burdening you in any way. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boast of mine will not be silenced in the regions of a care. And why? Because I do not love you. God knows that I do. And what I do, I will also continue to do in order to deny any opportunity to those who want an opportunity to be recognised as our equals in what they boast about. For such boasters are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light, so it is not strange if his ministers also disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness. Their end will match their deeds. And our responsory. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. And the Magnificat. My spirit rejoices in you, O God. My soul proclaims your greatness. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. My spirit rejoices in you, O God. My soul proclaims your greatness. And so we come to our time of intercession. 
we pray for the church throughout the world. We pray for the Diocese of Matlosane in southern Africa, for which its Bishop Stephen de Secker. Continue to pray for the Lambeth Conference, for Bishop Gregory as he takes part in that, and today as the bishops have been considering the theme of communion. Pray for St. Michael's Abagana in the Aberconry Mission area, for Kate Johnson and for church wardens, Cynthia Edwards and Len Ellis. Continue to pray for peace throughout the world, particularly in Ukraine. We pray for those who are sick, for Louise, Gordon, Joshua, Roy, Barbara, Derek, Hannah and Chris. We pray for the departed, among them especially Charlotte, who has been laid to rest today. We pray especially for her family and for her friends. We pray to the Lord in faith, we pray. We pray to you, our God, that the rest of this day may be holy and peaceful and full of your presence. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God, that the work we have done and the people we have met today may bring us closer to you. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God, that we may hear and respond to your call for justice and peace. In faith we pray, we pray to you, O Lord that you will sustain the faith and hope of those who are lonely, oppressed and anxious. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God, that you will strengthen us in your service and fill our hearts with longing for your kingdom. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. And the Collect. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, Graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wish you a very good evening indeed and um, look forward to meeting you virtually again very soon.